recording. They're starting today. Okay, there. There. I call to order the September 13th meeting of the Scar Town of Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we will begin by uh, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. If I can ask everybody to stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will then ask Doreen to call the roll. Christine Snow. Here. David Bort. Here. Joe Doherty. Here. Peter Freilinger. Here. Kyle Noonan. Here. And Richard Silkman. Here. Got it. Um, welcome to today's regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify me if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's order items in the following order. We have uh, approval of the minutes, approval of the draft, written decision uh, um, heard at the last meeting. We only have one of two appeals tonight. Uh, appeal number 2752 has been withdrawn, so only 2753 will be heard. And then we um, have a brief discussion of, uh, of uh, uh, remote business. Um, Mr. Chair, before we begin with Michelle's absence, should we nominate Kyle to the to be a voting member today? Uh, I don't think we need to nominate him. I think he automatically becomes one, but we okay. should definitely note no, that he has that in Michelle's absence, uh, Kyle is a voting um, a member for today's meeting. Noted. <laughs> Got it. Um, so with that, um, let's why don't we begin with the approval of the minutes from last week's or last month's meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the, the meeting minutes? Are there any questions or comments or amendments to them? Do I see a motion to approve? I move, <clears throat> excuse me, I move to approve. Thank you, Ms. Snow. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Richard. And uh, with no comments, um, could I see a show of hands to approve? And that is unanimous for vote, those of you who are at the meeting or can vote, correct? Or do you not wish to not approve? Yeah, exactly. Show of hands, exactly. That was, that was, thank you. And um, Kyle, I don't think you were there for the last meeting, were you? I was not. I will abstain. That's what I thought. Okay. So if you could indicate that, that the um, vote was five, nothing with one abstention. Or, yeah, but yes, that's right. So, okay. Uh, we will move on to the approval of the draft written decision for appeal number 2749, a miscellaneous appeal by Alex Tito, 565 U.S. Route 1. Um, did everyone have a chance to just take a look at the final, com final written comments here? Okay. Um, we will just go for a single uh, an up and down on this one, right? Uh, we don't need to. Yeah. So if I could have a motion to approve. Thank you, David. So moved. <clears throat> so David, motion to approve, and do I have a second? I'll second. second. We'll give the second to Ms. Snow, if that's okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll call a roll here for um, uh, approval. Um, uh, Ms. Snow. Aye. Mr. Bork. Aye. Uh, uh, Mr. Doherty. Aye. Um, uh, Kyle. I did not participate in the meeting, so I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Richard? <clears throat> yes. And I vote yes as well. That passes unanimously. Mr. Chair. Yes. Just a point of order. Um, so the, the full board is a five-member board, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't really need to elevate another, because you have one, two, three, four, and five. Correct? Oh, so, okay, that's actually a good point. Um, Joe, are you the second ultimate? Second. You're the second so alternate. So, so Kyle, yes, Kyle, Kyle is, is, but Joe is. Joe is, isn't. right. Correct. Okay, got it. Okay, gotcha. We will note that for the next set of votes. So, uh, sorry about that, Joe. Got it. Thank you. Um, then why don't we uh, head immediately to the next agenda item, which is, again, uh, appeal number 2753, the limited reduction of yard size, size for residential a lot appeal by Mike Richmond of Custom Concepts, Inc. On behalf of Michael Schott and Christy... Krista Schott, uh, trustees of the Schott Family Trust, 36 East Grand Ave. Mike, you have the floor. Good evening, all. 
Uh, Mike Richman, Custom Concepts Architecture. On behalf of my clients, like you said, Michael and Krista Schott, 36 East Grand Ave. So I'm here requesting a limited reduction of yard size to allow for a new exterior deck to be constructed off the rear of their existing home. Uh, due to some limitations of the existing home and the property, we find ourselves requesting this relief from the zoning board. This parcel is located on the ocean side of East Grand Ave, but on East Grand. It contains an existing home, paved driveway, um, stairs, and some hardscape and landscaping. Topography is pretty much flat, um, and of note, the, the lot is already above the allowable um, building coverage, and I've been working with Mr. Longstaff a little bit on that. The goal of the project is to allow for some direct access to their backyard. Currently, there is no direct access. We tried several different ways and layouts to avoid the need to be here and ask for this relief, um, but the circumstances are that the the majority of the back of their home, particularly on this side here, is a bathroom, laundry room, and kitchen space, all finished off. And the area over here, where we're proposing to put the deck, is an open dining area. There is also an existing, I don't want to call it a bilco, I'll call it a ac basement access, that you open the doors and climb directly down into the basement. So we have these obstacles in the way of where you'd like to go out to avoid having to, to come here. So the only practical location that we were able to find through this process has been over here, of course, within the setback area. We tried several odd shaped decks coming off the northeast side, coming out of this way, wrapping around. Um, number one, it ate up very valuable building coverage and lot coverage that we don't have to spare. Uh, and number two, it became very odd and close to um, this area here. It just wasn't at all practical. We couldn't come up with a practical way to do it. Uh, so please keep in mind that this request is only for a deck. It's probably two, two and a half feet off the ground and a railing system. Nothing above it that could potentially block anybody's views. In fact, the the yard is actually recessed a little bit down from the road. I do, I uh, have reworked some plans to, I guess, compensate for lot coverage by removing certain things that are there and are kind of funky, to be honest with you. These items in pink, there's a couple decks and platforms that are out there. We would remove those to compensate for uh, the new footprint of the deck, and that's something that I'm you know, I hope I could work out with, with Mr. Longstaff on, on the math on that. Um, so pretty simple request, I hope, and um, here for any, any questions. Yes, according to the town records, the home was constructed around the year 1900. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the rich property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner that other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, yes. This relief would only allow for the construction of an exterior deck that is relatively close to the ground, similar to other properties in the zoning district. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable <coughs> yard size requirements. No, not in any practical way that we could find for two different reasons. As I mentioned first, about half the rear wall of the home contains kitchen cabinetry and countertops, um, laundry area, and it really just wouldn't be practical to modify this area. Um, it's actually quite nice in there. Uh, second, there's an existing access stair 
leading to the basement along the rear wall that really must be maintained. The proposed location of the deck allows us to avoid both of these items. We did look at options for, for the shape of the deck to curve around this basement accent do, access door, but it became quite odd and would create kind of a dangerous situation because it was so close to that opening leading down to the basement. Great. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. No, it will not. Many of the similar properties in the immediate area are of similar scale or are actually much larger than the proposed design. Um, I did take some aerial photographs to show just uh, the difference in, in scale here. And the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No, they have not. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, with that, do we have any public comment or public discussion? Yes, sir. If you could uh, just stand there, identify yourself and your address here in town, and thank you very much. My name is Paul Kirby, and I, my address, I have two of them. One is at 32 East Grand Avenue, and the next house is uh, 3 Granite Street. So my, the back line of my property, the Old Pine Point Inn and the innkeeper's house, uh, is shared, is divided by that one wall. You can see if you, on that picture there, uh, the two white buildings, and you see that wall going all the way through. Uh, so I have quite a, a view of what's going on in their, in their house. Uh, I'm here not just to represent me. I'm also here to uh, represent uh, Mark Orlando, and he lives at, on, on Bliss Street, the house behind. Uh, the 36 East Grand, and uh, what we're concerned about, and also the fellow who is at 5 Granite Street, all right, that's Kim and Kit, uh, they bought uh, a few years ago. And that would be the house behind, uh, to the left behind your White House? Uh, Correct. Great house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the big house at the corner there, I have, it's three apartments. Some old timer back in the 70s bought the, it was one piece of property at one time. The uh, Pine Point Inn and the innkeeper's house. And she, I rented four bedrooms, two, no, three up and two down, five bedrooms in the, in, in three Granite Street as well. And some old time I bought them in the, in the 70s. And he sided them, windows, et cetera, and sold them as two separate properties. And uh, it was in uh, September of 2002 that both houses were up for sale. So, bingo, we bought both of them. And uh, it's a great place. I'm, a, I'm an old Worcester boy. And uh, of course, uh, we had Cape Cod back in the day. And since I was telling this gentleman, you know, back in the day, hey, Ma, I'm going to the Cape. And you'd hitchhike to the Cape. And OK, I'll see you on Sunday. I'm dating myself now. And we'd see. This was 1960, for God's sakes, and different world back then. Uh, I don't want to get on that <laughs> whole thing. But, if, you, uh, if you don't mind, we, we'd love to talk about the, the property here. Yeah, well, <laughs> what the concern is, is the, the people that uh, recently bought 36 East Grand, they also own that bigger house on Bliss Street. Uh, you can see the roof there across from the brown roof. It's a big house. Uh, they, uh, and uh, they also bought, uh, I think it's uh, 13 East Grand. It's on the other side of, it's not on the water side. They bought that too. They're from California, I guess. And uh, well, all I can say is I'm here, well, it's jo uh, Mark, who lives directly across the street from them, and my place, I can look right across and see that big house. And I'll tell you, uh, I have a, Something here that uh, 
I took off the note. You know, the good neighbor ordinance, the issues here, I could talk of, it's, it's about noise. And I will tell, I will tell you right now that uh, that big house that they, have, that they bought back in uh, 2015, uh, they rent it, and I think they would rent it to anybody. Uh, it's, it's a circus. And it's, uh, we as people who rent, and we, we, we rent to this, I've rented to the same families for the past 20 years. And then they take one, then they take two apartments. Three families take all three units, and they're quiet. I don't have any decks out there. I mean, there are tables you can see. But I, in the past, uh, I mean, they, they'll party till midnight outside with the music going, et cetera, et cetera. And just this past end of June in the, in the house at uh, 36, there's, what do they call it, the, uh, the cornhole game there, you know, the two things. There was a bunch of guys there, and they were, they were in their early 20s, and, it, and this was, I don't know, it was in the late afternoon, but they had rented the place, and you'd think they were at the, uh, at a Patriots football game yelling and screaming at five o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, so I walked over to the fence, and this fellow came over to me, and I said, you know, this, this is a quiet neighborhood, and I said, if you can keep it down, and he was very nice, but in the past, I'm talking 11 o'clock at night. I'm talking at midnight. I'd, I'd be woken up, and I would walk down through Mark's, between Mark's house and the other side of the fence. I'd walk over and, and just stare at the people in that house. Both garage doors would be up. I'm talking about the big house. And they're going to rent to the same, the same people, or call it what you will, are going to be living there with a big deck on the, on the outside. And, uh, you know, I remember one night I went out over there and this fellow came across the street. I didn't go cross, uh, I didn't cross Bliss Street. I stood on, in Mark's driveway and this fellow came over and he said, what's the problem? I said, well, you know, you woke me up. <laughs> They're out singing and dancing out in the driveway. And next thing you know, this fellow walks out of, the, the men are all in the garage, they're all half in the wrapper. You know, God love him. And he walks over and he says, what's your problem? You know, after 10 beers, he's 10 feet tall, you know? I tended bar a lot too, so. <laughs> and uh, I said, I'm not looking for trouble. I said, but you know, you're very loud. And you know, please respect the neighbors. And, uh, but that's gone on many a time, the noise. And Mark is concerned, I'm concerned, and other neighbors are concerned that this house if they have the opportunity to hang out on a big deck, that it's going to go and get loud. And I had, I copied, you know, these, the, the noise concerns and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I'm going to be very busy with, on my cell phone. Uh, daytime hours from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m and nighttime hours, quiet from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., and on the weekend from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Well, I mean, I'm talking again, 10.30, 11, 11.30 at night, and this goes on pretty much. Maybe the volume goes up and down, but it's, it's all summer long. And uh, it's tiresome. Gotcha. Um, well, thank you for your, uh, for your feedback, and we, we, we do appreciate it. Um, we do try to limit the time for individual public, but thank you very much, and uh, we, uh, we obviously will have this as part of the record as we, as we move forward. Are there any questions? I have a question for him. Sure. Thank you. Are you informing us that these are income properties and they're not owner-occupied? Correct. All of them? All of the... They own two houses in that. They own three now. Three. Yeah. And they don't live in any of them. No. They Thank may, you. I don't know if they come for a week or not, but it, it, they have, and then in the garage, they have all of these, these toys, 
they have a couple of, uh, I don't know what you call them, and they, you pedal them and you can sit four or six people in them. They have one that's motorized. And, uh, you know, it's a big party over there, week after week. And, uh, you know, it used to be a very quiet little neighborhood. I didn't even want to get on talking about what the, the noise on the streets now with all the motorcycles and, you know, you, I'm sure you've all read this about good neighbors and, and noise. It, it, it's, it's horrendous. But uh, they are not owner-occupied, those three houses. Any other questions for the, for the gentleman? Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you. Is there any other feedback from the public? Seeing none, um, uh, Brian, do we have anything for emails or phone calls or anything? No, we had some phone calls. Uh, Mr. Kirby was one of them. Uh, Mr. Orlando was another one. Okay. One, but, uh, gotcha. Substantially, I, though. I informed them that, excuse me, I, I informed them that they could come and, and speak or offer written comments. Okay. So, yeah. so and Mr. Kirby <coughs> mentioned that in the number of those names. So, okay. Thanks very much. If there's no other public comment, then I'm going to close the discussion and enter deliberations among the board. So first off, just to open it up for general discussion. <clears throat> yes, Christy. Are we allowed to consider whether it's owner occupied or not? Does that make any difference to the petition? No. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Then um, our remit really is to consider whether the um, requirements under the R4 variance um, are met, which is a factual determination um, based on the information presented to us by the appellant and based on information presented to us by, um, uh, by, by uh, uh, the public. Um, at this point, we determine our findings of facts and so we will go through the, um, the, uh, um, the uh, uh, demonstration items, and I'll ask, as our, is our tradition to you, uh, to, for each one of us to um, hold one of these? Um, Christine, why don't you start with number one? The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. The assessor's records show the dwelling existed around 1900. Any discussion or comment on that one? Got it. Uh, could I see a show of hands? Um, could I see a show of hands? Do we agree with that uh, item number one has been met? Uh, that's unanimous, yes. Uh, Mr. Bork, number two. <coughs> The requested reduction uh, is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. And um, uh, my comment on that would be the uh, decks and patios uh, and other outdoor living areas uh, are common uh, in this area. Uh, it's a, R4A district. Uh, also, uh, as a corner lot, uh, there are no locations on the lot uh, that, that are not in view of the street. So uh, I think this one um, is met. Any items of discussion among board members? Yes, Richard. <clears throat> Just one comment. I mean, decks and patios are very common, and we all have them. <clears throat> we use them all the time. It strikes me that the issue here is whether is the placement of the deck, not whether the decks are commonly utilized or available. And um, we have the building owner and the design suggesting that there's no other place to put it. Now, <clears throat> there may be other places. They may not serve exactly the same purpose, but they would certainly function as a deck would normally function for houses in this area if it were placed in a different position. The issue that strikes me is that <clears throat> moving it to a different position doesn't address the noise issues or the concerns that have been expressed. So if it were possible to locate the deck in a way that would reduce the noise questions or reduce <clears throat> the inconvenience to the neighbors, then I might be inclined to 
suggest that we do that. But since it doesn't appear that that's possible, even though we could locate it somewhere else, we're not going to get any advantage from doing it. I think the criteria is met. David? Uh, I would uh, further add that um, yeah, there is an existing noise ordinance, and nowhere in the criteria here do we address that. It's not part of what we're doing tonight. Uh, if the neighbors uh, object to the noise, they have a recourse, call the police. Uh, that's not what we do here. You know, we're simply looking at this in terms of does it meet the criteria that are set forth. The observation I'll make on this one is, and I, 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 I agree with Richard, there are other places you could put a deck, but it sounds like there's not another place where you could attach a deck and have an entrance onto the house and have it make any real sense. And so um, given that most, uh, uh, that, that plenty of houses in the R4 district around there and, and, and in residential districts have decks that do attach to the house so as to allow direct entry, um, I, I think it makes sense that they've looked at other potentials to attach it to the house and they just wouldn't allow for an entry and that would make those kind of silly decks as it were. So I think for that reason, it, I think it's this, is it essentially the same manner as it's described in the, in the variance and, and, and would, would agree that the, the appellant has met the, uh, the standard here? Is there any further discussion? Could I see a show of hands? That, um, do we feel that the uh, appellant has met the standard for uh, number two? That's unanimous, Doreen, thank you. Um, Joe, take us, even though you're not voting on this one. Sure. Number three is due to the physical features of the lot and to the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. I think is to start is, is what was explained earlier. They're already beyond um, the coverage, I believe, uh, on, on the lot. So they cannot uh, expand beyond that. And as uh, Mr. Richmond had explained, um, given the interior design of the house and the location of the access to the basement, which needs to remain, um, I assume, to get a mechanicals downstairs. Um, it's really not practical, practical to construct the deck in any other location. Um, so based on that, I believe that the, uh, the applicant has met the requirement. Any other comments on that? Richard. <clears throat> I just have one. In the presentation, it was represented that the I don't want to call them decks, but the stoops and the other deck are going to be removed. And that helps with the issue about lot coverage. Um, <clears throat> it strikes me that since it's been represented to us that they're going to be removed, we should make that as a condition of the permit in that, <clears throat> you know, it, it, they're not going to be there, they're not going to be necessary. And if we have them removed, then we've at least address the issue of lot coverage to the maximum extent that we possibly can. Do, do, is there agreement on that? Yeah, I think we should, uh, at, at some point uh, toward the end, entertain a motion to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I, I would concur on that one. Again, it's on the proposed conditions that they've already stated. So I think that's relatively straightforward, um, both in terms of removal of the existing patio and also the removal of what looked like um, a small deck and some structures on the front as well. So, Mr. Chair, uh, you know, as part of the actual building permit, mm -hmm. I have to review lot coverage anyway. So they've already quantified where they are on lot coverage. They couldn't add. The, I couldn't permit the deck if they didn't remove something else to take. Got it. Place. Okay. So they've met that. But they're not extending. That doesn't mean you can't add it as a condition. Got I'm just it. letting you know that. It's a belt and suspenders. <laughs> Got it. Understood. Okay, terrific. Um, then with that, and uh, not seeing any further discussion, could I see a show of hands that the applicant has met number three? That's unanimous. Number four, the effect, impact effects of the enlargement expansion or new building or structure on existing uses of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard side requirements. Um, and I think this is largely covered by the prior ones and, and again the applicant already acknowledges that the 
property which predates the zoning regulation um, exceeds the, the otherwise rec um, regular lot size um, uh, coverage issue. Um, but they are, 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 are within, um, they're, they're removing other items as we just discussed to stay within the overall um, current coverage uh, uh, size. Um, and again, this is within very much the scale of what takes place in the R4 district down um, on, uh, on, on, on the beach down that, down that way. So I think the applicant has met um, the requirements for, for this item. Yes, sir. Uh, let's, David, sorry. Okay. Uh, I think, too, that uh, we should consider uh, adding a requirement for uh, buffering, such as shrubs or taller fence or what have you, uh, to be able to cut back on any potential noise that might occur. So that's, as we get to the end, you know, that would be another thing that we should consider adding on. Okay. Gotcha. Any further discussion? Do we feel that the applicant has met the requirements for number four? Show of hands. That's unanimous. And finally, um, I will cover this one quickly. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, or building or structure, and therefore this is not an after-the-fact application. We've um, had that so attested, and Brian, you can attest to that as well. Gotcha. Any further discussion? Can I see a show of hands that this has been met? Okay, that is unanimous. Um, with that in mind, I will entertain a motion to approve. Um, uh, uh, the, um, what's the number on this one? I'm sorry. Approve uh, appeal number 2753. Do I have a, mo a motion for such? Can I jump in quickly? Is, sure. is, do we Do we talk about conditions now? Or do we do that after? We would do that now potentially as part of the motion to approve. So if somebody wanted to um, propose a motion which included such requirements, they could do so. Or we could approve a motion to approve and then have a discussion and amend that motion. So either way, we could do that either way. Now would be the time to do it though as part of the, the motion to consider. OK, I mean, I think, I think a brief discussion that could perhaps culminate in a, in a, a motion or a, a condition that we could attach to this sure. uh, approval would be to talk about the buffering. I think, as Mr. Bork mentioned, that's a that's a really good idea. Okay. Yeah. If, if we'd like to do that ahead of the motion, that's fine. Um, so that's just a, a matter of order. So okay. I think there should be, I think there should be a buffer. Um, and I, I think it should be, and I, I don't know <coughs> typically, and I would look to Mr. Longstaff for input on what these, how these are worded and what these look like, but something to have some percentage screen between Bliss Street and the deck at eye level, I think would be the, what we'd be essentially looking for. So that, that runs into a couple of issues, but certainly, certainly a, a more substantial, right now I think it's just a, Picket fence, correct? You can throw a cat through it. Not that you should, but it's a very <laughs> but odd. you could. Okay. <laughs> it's not substantial. It's not. We'll solid. talk about that afterwards, Brian. But okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, so, so um, seven feet in height is the maximum fence height that you could locate that close to the street. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything taller than that would have to meet. It would be a structure. Would have to meet a setback. So Got it. Okay. you're back into the same situation. So seven feet would certainly be more substantial than probably that fence is what, three feet tall? So, I mean, you'd be adding substantially more fence if you did a fence at seven feet. And the idea is a type of construction could be more <coughs> substantial or solid. I'll just offer that. Okay, Richard, thank you. It, it strikes me from the comment from the gentleman who spoke earlier. It, it, if I'm not mistaken, you live on the other side. So buffering on Bliss Street wouldn't necessarily provide you any benefits. Uh, it might provide people who live on the other side of Bliss Street, one of the other gentlemen, but there's <clears throat> the people that you are speaking on behalf of were on the opposite Bliss and behind. And so if we're gonna suggest that there'd be buffering, it strikes me that that's the more logical place to put it. You could do both. And then you, you have you have free range sure. to require a buffer anywhere on that lot. That you <clears throat> but but then that raises the issue about whether it is going to serve its intended purpose. I mean, if we have a two-story building that you live in, and the bedrooms on the second floor, putting a seven-foot fence isn't going to do anything for noise or visual in the evenings, and so we would just be imposing 
possibly some mitigation of noise, but it's not going to be very effective, and we ought to acknowledge that. And the same thing would be true for the fence behind the property. So I'm wondering whether or not imposing a condition on blistery really matters much. Um, there doesn't seem to be the problem from that side. Yeah, and, and, and Mr. Orlando, I believe, was the other gentleman um, that you, you, you had spoken to about. Of. Yeah. Um, he's, he's directly behind it, it looks like. So. Yeah, he's in the right there. This one? Yeah. So it does look like that, that back fence would be likely a material benefit to Mr. Orlando. Um, Single story house, you know, it could be, it could be in that, that instance. Yes. Um, can, can I ask a question? Sure, uh, Mike, remind me, was there veg is this substantial vegetation here next to Bliss Street already, or is it just small shrubs? I believe, if if anything, it's very, very low, very low. Okay, I couldn't tell from the photo, and I, yeah. And, and that actually was a question. Is that like stone coverage or there or there's some on Bliss Street there. There's um, is that like, uh, you know, shells or whatever they sometimes do down by the beach? I don't believe so. I think it's just the edge of the road. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. That's what I was going to look at Oops. in my packet. There? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about here. If you go down the, the, yeah. against the, the, the house itself, there's that brown or like tan coverage. Looks like grass. <laughs> you look at the opening. Effect. Yeah, there was a better shot. Let me get to that. Where was it? Was it here? No. I thought there was an overhead view. Yep. Right on page ZB4. The upper, oh, right here. sorry, lower left might be the best, best view. That's it. Yeah, that, that looks like it's a couple of shrubs and some, yeah, this is some, nice. yeah straw or dirt or. But you can see the, the picket fence. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. nothing. It, it's not very substantial. It does, it, you know, I think you could throw the cat over it. I'm not sure you could throw through it. But, yeah, it depends on the size of the cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, okay, so in, in terms of this discussion, though, we were talking about a, a, a modified motion or a motion with some stipulations. Um, do we feel that we have some consensus on what those stipulations might be, or should we just, where, should, where, where would the committee like to take this, or the board like to take this? I, so, so can we, Brian, is, can we require a vegetated buffer rather than just a fence? I mean, I, you know, a vegetated buff, buffer strikes me as something that absorbs noise. Right. Mm -hmm. It's different in that way, you know, qualitatively from a fence. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I still think that a buffer along Bliss Street does make sense. But I can understand, you know, I would be curious to hear from the rest of the board about that. I think, I, I, first off, a vegetative border makes more sense to me than a higher, than, than, than a fixed fence. Um, frankly, a fixed fence would actually focus noise um, and, and actually would, would create an echo effect, which would be worse. But to your point, um, a vegetative buffer would, number one, also grow, which would help a second floor issue uh, over time, maybe not immediately, but over time, and would certainly absorb no more noise much, uh, uh, much more effectively. Um, and that, I think, could be done on, all f uh, on the three sides from basically the paved drive, so, um, from the end of the paved drive to the back property line, the full back property line, and then the, um, the Bliss Street side to the house, if that makes sense to people. Yes, exactly. So it basically creates um, on the back half of the property, which is sounds like where the noise would be created anyway. Um, a, 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 a first off, attractive for the neighborhood and in line with the neighborhood, but also a, a quasi sound absorbing um, vegetative boundary that seems like it would help mitigate some of the neighbor's concerns, but
but also be in keeping with a uh, with design principles that Mike, I think you would agree would would not be off putting to the to, to the house. I appreciate that, and the reason I stood up was exactly as you had mentioned. Um, to me, a tall fence is the last thing you want to do. Yeah. Right. To me, there's yeah. nothing more anti-neighborhood than a seven-foot fence, right? But a vegetated buffer, um, 100%, yeah. for, for, for many reasons. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of clients who aren't here, so it's mm. very easy for me to you know, spend their time and money. Um, but I, I think that would be a, a, very, yeah. a very easy give. Yeah. I think g given the concerns and the, the experiences that have been expressed by the, d the direct abutting neighbors, I think that seems like the right neighborly um, thing to do for, for, for this. Um, and, and especially in a, in a situation where, um, you know, on the facts of the case, um, the, 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 the zoning board really would be, would be, requ would, would be required to, to find in favor of the, of, of the appellant, but we want to do so in a way that, that enables the voice of the, of the of butters to be heard. So, or the, the voices to not be heard as loudly, perhaps, is the right way to put it. So, um, okay, could, could, may I have a, a, a motion then to approve uh, Appeal 2753, subject to the establishment of a vegetative buffer on the sides of the property as indicated um, uh, by this discussion? Before, <clears throat> Kerry just has one question. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand the concept of a vegetative buffer, but I don't know what it, how you define it. <clears throat> Number one, I mean, a, a vegetative buffer is a, 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 a row of roses, right? That, that'll work. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a buffer. Keep dogs out of the yard, but it won't get to the height issue. And not those cats, but anyway. <clears throat> and planting, I mean, down here, things don't grow real well down there in sand. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. some stuff does grow. It's but a pretty big tree right there. It, as I say, <laughs> occasionally ones will grow, but that probably is, is probably 30, 40 years old right. and you know, well belong beyond your lifetime. So in the meantime, you know, you get, I, I just wondering if we're going to impose something on somebody, we ought to give them a little bit more definition so that they do what we want, yeah. not what they want, yeah. and then I, claim it's a buffer. I have, I have a suggestion for, for your consideration. Yeah. Um, we have a sustainability coordinator, Jamie Fitch, mm -hmm. who's very um, conversant in, in types of vegetation um, for all types of purposes, mm -hmm. and I would I would throw it out for the board's consideration that the vegetated buffer be of a native species that will do well in the soils down there and that the a layout be proposed that is reviewed and approved by our sustainability coordinator to try to obtain the effect that the board wants in that that is to try to create something that is robust enough to knock down the noise but will also actually grow and do well and look decent and that's right and and, and actually the because I'm not a I'm not a landscape <laughs> architect and no no although it, it's, it's it's interesting from a timing perspective the long range planning committee is is dealing with the question of vegetative buffers broadly within the commercial zones of town so I think we do have the expertise with the sustainability coordinator um, and with the planning director on deter on I, what I what I propose is that we as a board. Um, uh, approve this subject to the establishment of a buffer which meets the standard, which meets a standard to be described by um, the planning department. Um, and, and then Richard, I think, you know, they're working hard on making sure we have the right kinds of trees, shrubs, et cetera, the right height that they're maintained appropriately, et cetera. So I think if we defer, if we make sure that they have approved the, the, the type of buffer that, that ultimately the, the owners will install, then that would be part of the planning approval and we, we could move forward on that basis. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Thank you. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion on that one. Any further discussion? Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank <laughs> you, Ms. Snow. Uh, could I have a vote? And Dorian, why don't you um, call the, the roll on this one? Christine Snow. Aye. Aye. Peter Freilinger? Aye. Tom Aye. Yes. And appeal 2753 passes. Thank you very much. And thank you for the public for your input. We appreciate that as well. Next on the agenda is a discussion of a remote participations policy. But um, in the intervening time since the last meeting, we've gotten some information that, number one, there's been a change in the legislators 
the legislature's consideration of the delegation to boards and or to committees by town councils of the um, remote participation process. And I think we're on hold on this one. We're waiting for some guidance, I think, from town council to determine how, how or if we should move forward with this or whether they will be establishing a new town-wide standard for all committees and we'll just be sucked into that one. So I would propose that we just table this one and, and, uh, until such time as we have uh, greater guidance from the town. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Seconded. Second. Second. Ms. Snow. Second. Second. All in, all just one, one yeah. question. I, I don't want to lose sight of this motion, right? <clears throat> I mean, I don't like the motion that says we're going to wait until we have better guidance from somebody. No, no. Because that's an indefinite time period. So what I would suggest is that if we haven't heard from the town council or anybody in the town on this issue by our November meeting, that we put it on the November meeting's agenda and address it at that time. To be important, the, the, the motion is to table. So by table, we're pushing it to the next meeting and it would then be pushed to the next meeting if we decided to table. So by tabling it, we're not putting it into a bin in the backyard. We're just pushing it to the next meeting and we're not gonna take any further action today. So. We will have this on the agenda for next meeting um, to either retable because we're closer to having town council guidance or we're not getting anywhere and we should actually consider what we want to do. And again, for clarity, the, the original motion said we will table it until we get clarification from the town council. No, ta tabling is just an No, 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 the motion said it. The, the, you didn't say I'm tabling it. The motion said I'm tabling it until we get guidance from the town council. And what I'm suggesting is that I'd like to amend that motion to be a simple table, if that's the way you wish to go. Gotcha. I'm fine with that. But I don't want to have the motion be, that we're voting on be one where we're tabling it until such time as we get guidance. Gotcha. I th okay. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I, I, my, my concept of tabling is I could say it's until we get town council guidance, but it's still tabled. But okay, fair enough. It's tabled. Gotcha. Oh, good. So the motion is to simply table this until the next meeting, and we'll... Bring it up in November, or no, October. October is the next meeting. Yep. Mr. Chair, I, I will I will attempt to get whatever information I can get I by will. the next meeting. I just don't know if the council will have sure. a chance to take it up, but really. we'll certainly yeah. keep it on the radar, and I'll uh, they'll have to sooner or later do something. So we'll definitely get some guidance at some point. I just don't know if it'll be by next meeting or not. Promise. <laughs> okay. So uh, show of hands to simply table this until the next meeting. All agreement. So that's that. Um, any further comments from the zoning board? Or we can make this a short meeting. Then may I ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Borg. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Said, uh, Richard got that one. Uh, any objections? Seeing none, the meeting is adjourned.